Hi, we're going to make a cabbage recipe today. And the funny thing is, I don't even know what to call this because um, this is, so I guess I'm going to call it pan fried scalloped cabbage because we're going to do some pan fried cabbage. And you can stop there, especially if you don't do dairy. Um, and if you do dairy and you want something really rich and luscious, kind of a special side dish that's high fat and balances the carbs of the cabbage, then you can come on along with me and do the scalloped skillet cabbage. Um, I have in the pan right now some pancetta. And pancetta is just a really fatty Italian bacon. Now, if you don't have pancetta, you can use just bacon. There's nothing wrong with that. I had some that I picked up at Aldi's I needed to use, and said so that's why I'm using pancetta. In fact, um, the inspiration for this, we just got home from church, and I'm trying to feed the family, clean out the fridge a little bit. I had some leftover cabbage, and my daughter said, I don't really want fried cabbage. And so I thought, hmm, what can I do to make this a little more special? So that's what we're doing. Pan fry the pancetta. I'm gonna add some garlic to it, if I can open my garlic. <laughs> Big strong husband, can you open that? Thank you. <laughs> okay, now garlic. I'm going to add some fresh garlic. And this is about a teaspoon of fresh garlic. Add more or less to your liking. Um, the lid is there, so I don't wanna keep smelling it. I've got this on a fairly high heat, medium heat, not too bad, a medium heat, and trying to, like I said, get something done before church. So the, the bacon, the pancetta is browning up really nicely. It's, it smells great. Pancetta is just, like I said, this fatty, meaty. Um, it's different from pork belly in that it's a little more ham-like and thicker, but it's delicious. I'm gonna throw my cabbage in, and I've simply chopped the cabbage kind of like I would for a crack slaw, maybe a little smaller pieces, but I um, I'll turn the heat up a little bit since I'm adding the cabbage. But I've just chopped up what I had left over, literally, and I had maybe a third to a quarter of a cabbage, so this is not a lot um, of cabbage. And like I said, between one third of a head and a quarter. If I measured it, it's probably three cups of cabbage. And I know I don't measure things, and like I said, I'm using what's left in the fridge, and that drives some people nuts <laughs> because they measure everything. Now, the pancetta has given a little bit of fat, but I want a little extra fat in this um, so because the cabbage seems to absorb it as it goes. So a couple of options here. Uh, butter tends to burn, especially for the time we're gonna be cooking this. So I can add some ghee, which doesn't tend to burn. Ghee is the milk solids taken out, and I love ghee. Um, I also have bacon fat that I save for when we cook bacon. And generally I'm gonna use ghee or bacon when I'm cooking something like this. And because I want that bacon flavor with my fried cabbage, that's what I'm going to use. I'm gonna put a good couple tablespoons in there. And we'll see if that's enough. And I just keep my bacon fat. People ask me, do you store it in the fridge? How long does it keep? I just keep it right there in an old pickle jar. It's a cloth and pickle jar. I love cloth and pickles. And it just sits there um, by my stove, kind of like a century, just whenever I might need it, it is close at hand. So what we're gonna do, and I'm probably gonna um, pause the video for a bit, but I've got the bacon fat in there. You can see it's all shiny. It's not gonna stick to my pan. And I just want to keep sauteing it a little bit um, to let it cook and get tender. You can put it on a really high heat and fry it. I'll do that at the end. Right now my challenge is to get the cabbage cooked enough so that it's tender, and then I can turn up the heat and kind of fry it, give it that little crispy bit. Um, but for right now, I just want it to get tender. The other thing that you can do, and I do from time to time, you can add some fresh onion. Now onion adds carbs, so if you're being super, super careful with your carb count, you might not want to do that. Um, you can also put a lid on this to help the cabbage steam a bit. I'm not gonna do that. But anyway, um, let's let it cook probably five or 10 minutes till my cabbage gets tender. Now, and I'll add some salt and pepper. And um, at that point, you can serve it with the salt and pepper when it's done, or you can keep going for a little something special. Okay, so I've just been stirring the cabbage for about 10 minutes or so, it's starting to get tender. Uh, a couple of brown pieces. I don't know if you can see those or not. And I did just taste a bite. It tastes pretty good, if I do say so myself. So at this point, I could put a little salt and pepper on it and call it done. And I would just use a little sea salt. 
and use a little bit of heavy, I'm mean not heavy cream, use a little bit of pepper and this can go straight to the table and just as a fried um, cabbage. Now I also, if I had just used, lots of times if I'm in a hurry, I'll just use bacon fat and I'll throw in some uh, bacon pieces and this is just the bacon pieces I get at Sam's Club. So you, even though I've got pancetta, I'm going to throw that in because bacon. <laughs> okay. But we're going to take this a step further. And so if you can do dairy, um, this is what makes this dish a little more special. Okay, I'm gonna make a space for the dairy and um, just give it a good stir before I do that. And this cabbage, it's not soggy and cook it to your taste. Some people like it really well done. Um, this I'm doing, it's not quite as done as I would do in the skillet because it's gonna cook a little more with the dairy in there. So I've pushed it over to the side and I'm gonna add a, some dairy here. This is creme fraiche. No, I'm sorry, this is mascarpone, mascarpone cheese. Mascarpone is very much like cream cheese. When you compare them ounce for ounce, um, compare by weight or by volume, the interesting thing is this has roughly, make sure this is 12, 12 grams of fat per um, two ounces, or I think it's 28 grams. And so that's 12, whereas Philadelphia cream cheese has um, nine. So you're getting more fat with using mascarpone. It is more pricey and it can be harder to find, but this is the Trader Joe's version. And I find it, you can find it at Whole Foods. They have it. Interestingly enough, it's often with the specialty cheeses, but I'm using some mascarpone. And again, it behaves kind of like, or mostly like um, cream cheese. I'm only using about an ounce and a half to two ounces. I didn't put quite as much as I'd intended to. I like this for dessert too. You guys may have heard me talking about, I use mascarpone um, with some creme fraiche to make a faux yogurt <laughs> and I love it. But mascarpone um, is zero carb and it's described as an Italian style sweet cheese. It's really not all that sweet to, to me. And it's zero carb per serving, whereas there's one or two carbs in the Philly. So higher fat, lower carb, it wins in my book. And I didn't compare the protein, I'll do that. Now this is creme fraiche and this is sour cream. This sour cream this is the Daisy brand. It's one carb for two tablespoons and five grams of fat. My creme fraiche says less than one carb for two tablespoons and 11 grams of fat. So we're comparing five to 11. So creme fraiche is just a higher fat ratio. And I've got this turned down on low heat. I'm gonna turn it even lower since I'm talking. So I could put a dollop of sour cream or I could put my creme fraiche in. And I'm gonna put creme fraiche again. It's a higher fat content. And how much did I put? I put what was left. <laughs> I put about a, a third of a cup of creme fraiche. Again, you can use sour cream. How much you put is also going to depend on what you how much cabbage you have in there. So I'm going to just stir this in and let it get melty. And that's the word, melty. And if it needs to be less thick, and I may have turned it down too much, but if it needs to be less thick, I can pour a little cream or some chicken broth. Chicken broth makes a, uh, brings a great flavor to it. So I'm putting this in. And again, I've put some garlic already. Remember when I was doing it, I put garlic. So pretty much I'm using garlic and salt in this. And I'm gonna just stir it around. Now it's not heavily creamed because you saw how little I put in there. It was like two tablespoons of the mascarpone, so not a lot. And it was maybe a third cup of the creme fraiche. And you can add more if you'd like. It's just lightly creamy. I'm keeping it on a relatively low heat. You don't want the dairy to separate. You get that heat too hot and your dairy's gonna act up on you. And just to get it nicely coated, I am gonna add maybe a tablespoon or so of heavy cream, I'm not measuring. That's about two tablespoons of heavy cream. And I would, at this point, I would taste it um, to see if it needed more salt or pepper. I think it definitely needs more pepper. I'm gonna keep it in low. And I'll turn it down a little bit because I see it bubbling. I don't want the cream, the, the dairy to separate. And that's it, it's really light and yummy. Um, let me, oh, the, the last thing I do to finish it off, 
turn on is I can add some cheese. Now this is a port salute I get from Trader Joe's. Jonathan and I love this. This is the unexpected cheddar that I have to buy by the case for my husband. Um, so cheddar would be okay. Cheddar would be a little strong. I probably wouldn't use this. Port Salute is very mild and creamy, uh, almost like a really, really mild brie. Love it. I could also use my favorite, um, which I actually may use. Um, it's a Havarti. Havarti is just fantastic. This was on sale. Buy one, get one free. Um, and I love that. Or you can finish it, and this is Gracie's favorite, you can finish it with just a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And so this is grated parm. In fact, I'll do that since I already have it out. But I'm really tempted to switch up and use Havarti. So this is how my family says I never cook the same thing twice. Um, don't expect the Parmesan to melt and be creamy. It's gonna give a little more of a crunch, like a casserole flavor on top. And Jonathan, are you volunteering to try it? Um, the kid wouldn't eat cabbage if he was starving, so that's why I'm asking if he's going to volunteer to try it. No, I wanted so, the port salute. Ah, you're after my cheese. You're like a mouse after the cheese. This is fried skillet, um, <laughs> fried cabbage, and I guess, I don't, what, I don't know, whatever I call it at the beginning, we'll go with that. Anyway, I'm going to let it sit just a bit on low heat, let the parm melt, and then I'll serve it up to my family. Hope that if you make it for your family that you enjoy it too. So I've put the cheese on it. We're going to let it sit, let it melt just a little bit. And I think um, it's ready to serve to the family. And I have a taste tester. No shortage of taste testers ever around my house. Well, that's not true. From time to time, um, it's hot. What do you think? Is it just boring fried cabbage? That's creamy. That's really good. You like it? I you like gonna it a lot. Call the kids to the table or just save it for you? I'll eat it. They Port don't like cabbage. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that if good you job. make it for your family that they enjoy it as much as mine do.